channel as you guys can see I am back at home now I'm back home in Calgary I got home Tuesday night at like 7 30 p.m. and I pulled my first all-nighter like ever I'm not even kidding I was up for 25 hours on Tuesday time difference totally flew me off flew I was flying all day totally threw me off <laughs> and it was just a really long day but I could not be more happy to be back home honestly I just had an amazing six weeks. It feels like a dream. Greece and Croatia were phenomenal, incredible, out of this world. I, I can't even begin to explain how beautiful it is. It's like freaking Narnia over there. A different world, a completely different wonderland, I swear. <laughs> so if you guys ever have the opportunity to go to such a place, I highly recommend it. I had such an amazing time. Um, I'm not trying to like rub that in your guys' face or anything. Just literally telling you guys that I want you to go there and I want you guys to experience it. It's so stunning. There's so much to do and experience and the people are amazing and the food. The food? Nah. Yeah. The food, I didn't eat out that much, but the food that I did have, like the seafood, was really good. But I had a really hard time finding good produce at mo some grocery stores on the islands. But we're not going to get into that. The seafood is amazing. So, anyways, back at home now. That means that the Summer of Our Lives playlist ends here. I wanted to share with you guys a Q&A that I did with Paige on our last day in Croatia. I had a bunch of questions from you guys asking about the trip, like how did you plan it, how did you budget for it, like what's the best way to travel, all that kind of stuff. So I sat down with Paige and she answered all those questions for you guys. Paige is my best friend, I've known her for about eight years. She started to really get a passion for traveling about three and a half years ago. So she's gone 28 countries, she's 25 years old going to be 25. Uh, 25 years old. She's gone to 28 countries debt free. She's really good at traveling, um, budgeting and just like finding her way around and stuff like that. So don't tell me I have something in my teeth. Just kidding. I don't. Uh, so when the opportunity arose, like we were, were both ready to take a trip together. Um, I just, I was like, girl, you, you do you and I'ma come with you. So that's what we did. So I sat down with her, got a bunch of your guys' questions answered. I hope that you guys enjoy this video. Give it a thumbs up if you guys did. Love y'all. See you in the next one for a full day of eating, workout, all that fun stuff. Hope y'all enjoy. Oh, I feel like I'm interviewing you. I know. And just to let you guys know, this is the first time I've done anything like this. So we haven't rehearsed this. We're just going with it. So if something just doesn't sound right, I'm sorry. It's I'm gonna new, be fine. I'm new to this. <laughs> You guys know me. I can barely talk on the regular. Okay, so why did you choose Greece and Croatia? Because in 2015, I traveled Europe, and they were two of my top picks of the places I went to. And now, with both of their economies, it's actually pretty, pretty inexpensive to travel Croatia and Greece at the moment. Yeah, it's been really good. We've gone, we've been gone for six weeks in total. And to tell you guys a bit about the islands that we went to, um, we started in Santorini, went over to Mykonos, Crete, um, Dubrovnik, uh, Montenegro. Yeah, and then we went to Vishavar and Brosh in Croatia and ended it in Split. Yes, and now we're in Zagreb, but we're going to fly out tomorrow. So this is just like a transitional period. So we've hit up a lot of places. We've yeah, done we have. Countries yeah. And a bunch of different cities. I chose those islands because I'd been to Greece before, obviously. Um, and Mykonos and Santorini are pretty much staples in Greece. Randy's first time in Greece, she had to see those places. But I also chose Crete um, because it's such a beautiful island and so big, and I hadn't done it before. 
and a lot of the pictures I looked at online of places I wanted to visit were located in Crete. And we had the time. And we really, yeah, we you really need a solid 10 days to do Crete, and we had it, so. We spent, yeah, like yeah. a solid eight days there. It was amazing. Yeah, 10 days we were there. 10 days in yeah. total. Yeah. So, yeah, it was so amazing. I would highly recommend Crete. Um, between the three islands that we went in Greece, I would say like Santorini was amazing, um, Mykonos is like the new Ibiza type thing, it's a party island, but I'd say that Santorini and Crete, Crete was my fave. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so one of the questions, um, well, how did, why did you choose, and we just answered that, how did you plan the trip? How did you know which islands to start and end at, and the most affordable routes? Okay, um, so when it came to Greece, I, like I said, I'd already done it. And last time I did it, I transferred through ferries, island hopping from island to island. So I knew that was the most inexpensive and accessible route. Um, because with there's ferries, so much water. Yeah, there's ferry, not because there's so much water, but there's a ferry route going every single day to each island. So you can, as long as you book in advance, you can get to the next island the next day if you book in advance. So that's why... What was the question again? Um, <laughs> how did you know which islands to start and end? Oh, at okay. The most affordable route? Yeah, so I've done seven Greek islands. Um, I knew that Santorini is the closest to Athens, and we flew into Athens, so it only made sense to do Santorini first. Mykonos is super close. Mykonos, Milos, and Eos are all in that same pod of islands. So, judging on which ones you want to go to, Mykonos was the best second option for island hopping and Crete is a bit further out actually one of the most furthest so it just made sense to do that one last yeah. and then from Crete either take a ferry all the way back to Athens but for us we just kind of splurged a little bit and we took the plane to plane route to Dubrovnik yeah it just made the most sense rather than losing a whole day traveling we could get a plane ride yeah, and we've done that a couple times. So um, when it's easy and when you have the time, definitely uh, would recommend the ferries. And then yeah. if you don't want to spend a whole day traveling, because like we've done that before by ferry, um, just take the plane because it's pretty uh, inexpensive to fly within Europe. Yeah, it is. Juggle it out. You can fly pretty cheap within Europe. It's just you got to be careful because there's all the extra fees like baggage charges that mm -hmm. they'll charge you with on top of your flight and just make sure you do put those on prior to being at the check-in desk at the airport. Yeah, she's learned the hard way and I've seen that they're pretty hefty charges. Yeah. Like, no other airline in Canada in the States charges like $50 for a baggage fee. No, yeah, <laughs> it, it can get pretty you can, hefty. It can, yeah, it can add up. So yeah, just like depending on how much time you guys have, see if you have time to go by bow and then if you don't, you don't want to spend the whole day traveling, then definitely um, flying would be your next option. Yeah. The one thing to consider though when it comes to Croatia, I didn't realize this because last time I traveled Croatia, I did it with um, a tour called Yacht Week, which is island hopping with um, a group of X amount of boats. You guys whatever, know what Yacht Week is. Yeah, whatever, whatever <laughs> week you go on. That's what I did last time. Uh, what I didn't realize though is that island hopping in Croatia isn't as easy as it is in Greece. There isn't ferry routes interconnecting between each island every day. So depending on what day it is that you want to travel to the next island, there could not be a ferry going that day. So you just got to be a little careful when it comes to island hopping in Croatia if you're going to do it on your own to plan in advance, figure out what bo what boat routes are going on what days. That way you don't get to a point or a situation where you're going to need to pay like 700 Long euros more. for a speed boat back to split. Because that can happen. Um, Google is really easy if you guys just Google um, from city to city and same with ferry routes. But yeah. is there a couple of buses or ferries that you would recommend? There is um, the, the local ferry, which goes every day from Split to Havar and Brosh, which is, what's it called? Jar... I don't know what we'll put it on. Yeah. We'll put a link for it on. It's called like Jarajona or something. Yeah. Jadrajina. Something like that. But that one is the most um, inexpensive route to take from island to island. Yeah, how much was it? Um, like 23? Yeah, Canadian? they're ra ranging around each ride was like 20 to 15 Canadian dollars, which is pretty cheap. I mean, they're only like an hour and a half, two hour rides, but yeah. a lot cheaper than the ferries in Greece, to be honest. But then again, um, the convenience of the Greece ferries 
kind of made the money you were paying worth it. Yeah, because there's just something always available. Yeah, totally. So, um, there's also catamarans going from each island to each island, um, but they're independently owned. So if you did want to take that route, it's a little bit more expensive than the ferry, but you're just going to have to do your own investigating online or go into a travel agency and have them book one for you. And there's travel agents like everywhere in every city. You can go in there and ask questions like the best way to get from city to city, island to island. So definitely um, make sure that you guys take the time to research. And like we just said, um, Google is amazing. Like you could just type in the two cities that you want to go to and from and routes will pop up. But we will have a couple um, bus recommendations and the ferry recommendation down below in the description box. Okay. Um, this is a good one. I've just been following her steps this entire time, you guys. Uh, how did you budget properly? Like how much money did you know to bring and how did you make it work the entire time that you were gone? Okay, so. She's the budgeting queen. I've learned a lot. What's the most important is figuring out first what lifestyle you're comfortable living with when you're abroad. Um, do you want to eat out every single day? Is that something that caters towards you? Like, is, are you there for the food and to dine out all the time? Because if you are, your budget needs to be double what mine was first. Like that just has to be it. Yeah. That's key. Number one. Number two is how much is your dollar worth back home? Like, are you dealing with, um, the Euro? Are you dealing with the Canadian dollar? How much is your dollar worth and where are you going and what is it in comparison to the dollar that you're going to? So for me, I knew that with my eating regime, which is prepping most of my meals um, and my abilities and wants to want to walk around, I don't need to pay for taxis everywhere. I'm okay taking the bus. For some people, that's not okay. Some people don't enjoy bus rides. So if you're willing to like take the... Um, take the, not the low class route, but if you're willing to like compromise a bit on your transportation means and your eating means, then I was budgeting around a hundred Canadian a day, which might sound like a lot to you, but you have to think about your food will probably come to around 30 to 40 Canadian dollars maybe for a day. Just say you're eating at around 10 Canadian dollars a meal. Then you have to think about what you were gonna do that day. So I always was putting my budget at 50 Canadian dollars for excursions or whatever I decided to do that day that was the activity. The reality is some days you'll go to the beach and you won't spend that money, but then there's gonna be another day where you're gonna spend 100 Canadian dollars on an excursion. So it all needs to balance out and just having a healthy budget, that way you're not nickeling and diming at the very end and you can live comfortably, my budget is around a hundred Canadian dollars a day. Just to give you an idea, a hundred times 30 is $3,000. So I, my budget, right now. oh my God, <laughs> my budget was around $5,000, $6,000 for a two month trip. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, sense. I think that's a healthy budget to have and it can get you a long way. As long as you are conscious, ca sorry, cautious of where you're spending your money and that's all it really takes is just yeah. being a little frugal with things that you know aren't that important. Totally. And we weren't like scraping nickels and dimes this entire time. Like we were just really smart with it. We were making the majority of our food. We were going out to eat like once or twice in each um, city. We prep food for the day ahead so that we weren't like super hungry. We were spending our money wisely on excursions and making sure that we saw like the coolest things to do in that city. You save your money for those moments that you didn't know existed. And then when you find that excursion or you see that something that you didn't know was there, but you go somewhere and it's available, that's where you spend your money that you've been saving. Yeah. You wait till you have those moments that are worth spending the money for, and you're gonna be so happy you didn't spend the $300 on a flight to get somewhere and saved it for the $300 skydive. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you just gotta plan accordingly for things like that. Yeah, well said. All right, we're gonna get into a couple questions that was just asked on the previous video. So let's get started with oh we just answered that one here let me find one that we didn't 
Did you arrange all of your stays through Airbnb? Yes, we did, except for in Santorini. Do you want to tell them about that? Yeah, so I have a few friends that are Greek and they're from Greece and they let me know two summers ago that a lot of these locals don't use the internet and they just rent their rooms out. So the most cost effective way to get rooms on some of the islands in Greece is literally just rock up and you will see people with signs for apartments, which wasn't totally the case in Santorini. We didn't exactly see people with signs for apartments, but I just left her with my bag and I went for a walk and I found a place within, I'd say 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, like the thing is, it's like, are you comfortable with that? Are you comfortable with the unknown that like you might potentially have nowhere to sleep like it's the risk you take like it's cheaper and it's a she bit more it's, it's it's an experience but yeah it's possible it's definitely possible um even in Croatia when we went to Markiska I saw people with signs like yeah I'm really for their shocked. apartments like you know it's totally available for you to show up somewhere you will find somewhere to sleep it's just if you have you're to comfortable to well it's if you're comfortable taking that like feeling that a little bit of anxiety that you maybe won't have somewhere to stay. Um, but it's the cheapest way to do it. Yeah, I think that it's a part of the experience too. Like the fact that she just walked down the street and came back and was like, I got us something. I was like, that's so cool. But if I was by myself, I would have picked the Airbnb. But now that I've been here with her and I've seen it and like I've seen that it can be done, um, just know that, yeah, like a lot of the places, especially the ones that we went to, you can totally walk down the street and find somewhere to stay. So there's those two options for you. We did though book Airbnbs for the a most lot part, yeah. after that just because no stress no stress exactly and for Santorini it just made sense because the island like everything's not available online anymore because most people do you know you're dealing with um in Santorini it's one of the most it's probably the most popular island with Mykonos in Greece so you're dealing with a lot of the accommodation that's listed online being unavailable. So you take that hit. But when you're going somewhere like Crete or Brosh or Vis, where it's not such a very, very small island where you can just walk up and down the streets, it's better to just book online with an Airbnb. That way you're not aimlessly wandering really long streets. You know, you got more surface to cover. Totally. Yeah. It's a bigger city. Um, what was the biggest struggle? Okay, this is probably a good one for me because she's gone and traveled like around the world. Um, what was the biggest struggle you faced in regards to new cultures and traveling in Europe? Um, honestly, it, I didn't, fa I didn't face a huge culture shock or anything. Um, I just found that it was a little bit harder to communicate in Greece because there was less people that spoke English and I'm not really good at reading body languages where Paige, like the ladies would be speaking to her in a different language and she'd be able to like understand what they're saying. And I'm like, <laughs> but it's really cute that you keep talking to me in this language, but I don't know what you're saying. Um, and she's really good at that. So I think that the biggest thing would be in Greece, um, I found it, I came across it more. I just didn't know what they were saying and I didn't know how to ask for what I wanted. But then in Croatia, a lot more people speak English and it was just, I. that's kind of why I felt more comfortable in Croatia, just because they could understand what I'm trying to ask for. <laughs> yeah. So she's gone to like Asia and um, so many places. So what was yeah. the biggest struggle for you? Like, do you have one for this trip? For this trip? Maybe the biggest struggle for me... Oh. In regards to, regards to culture? And honestly, no. No. No, I she consider... Doesn't. No, I consider Europe very first world in degrees of like a culture shock or any kind of pullback that I would feel being uncomfortable in situations. Europe is pretty... Pretty... It, 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 it's good. I don't, I don't consider it culture shock at all. So yeah, I guess it was just me because I've only visited, I've only visited like six countries. So, um, okay. How often did you guys have a treat cheat day? Uh, well we had like 
We had three? three. Yeah. Three, yeah. And they were epic. And I'm so sorry I didn't get it for YouTube, guys. We were trying to find a good balance between... We were just between... too big, busy being piggies. Yeah, we really were. <laughs> trying to find a good balance between vlogging and then living in the moment. Sleep, but... eat. Sleep, eat. Yeah. Get up. Um, food run. Back to the place. <laughs> food run. Back Basically. to the place. <laughs> uh, what is one of your favorite things that we ate on our treat meal, though? Ooh, the chocolate croissant. The chocolate we croissant. We both agree on that. That was amazing. So good. I kind of want another one before we leave, but I'm like, girl, you ate your fair share. <laughs> yeah, it was so good. Yeah. And what was the we got some really good gelato from Luca's in Split. Okay, we'll recommend you some places right so now. So good. Luca's in yeah. Split, Luca's, best ice cream. Um, if you want good burgers, um, Toto's Burger Bar yeah. was one of the best veggie burgers, and they have yam fries, which are really hard to come by in Europe, and onion rings were on top. Yeah, that yeah. was really good. And the, was it Babic? For our cross, um, cross no, cross. it was Bobus actually. There's so many Bobus and Babix around. Yeah, so yes, it was Bobus. Bobus. Um, Amazing chocolate croissant. Go in the morning though, so that yeah. it's fresh. And the tip for the bakeries is stay out of the main old town center for the bakeries. They're a bit more overpriced, and Everything's the quality so of it so wasn't as better. good that we found. Yeah, it wasn't as good. No, it's so much yeah. better outside the old town because um, it's where the locals go as well. So like yeah, for we everything. Yeah, we very locale. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not locale, but local. <laughs> local. <laughs> um, what other questions do we have here? I think that's about it because we answered a lot of them in the first part of the vlog. So yeah, guys, I'm pretty sure that we answered all of your questions. I hope that you enjoyed this Q&A. Paige has already written a couple. How many um, travel vlogs have you blogs have you written since you've been here? Two on Greece. I'm still writing the ones on the tips that I have for traveling Croatia. But the ones that you wrote. Two. Yeah, tell them what they are. Oh, sorry. Um, I wrote one on how I traveled the Greek islands on 2K. That's to CAD, Canadian dollars. Which is that one. Yeah. <laughs> so that's like nothing compared to the American dollar. And the other one was my top experiences in all the Greek islands I've been to. So if you're considering going, um, it's a good opportunity to see places that I think were the best out of all the seven islands I've been to. So those are just two blogs amongst the many other ones that she has. I'll have the links down in the description box below. So if that interests you guys, definitely hit it up. And then like she just said, her third one is coming. Yay. And she actually has a bunch of low calorie cocktail recipes as well that she's been making us throughout this trip. And there's... Maybe thinks I'm an alcohol. No, I but, know. But I'm not. <laughs> She's I just not. Like a few drinks. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're so so good, and I like to enjoy um, some cocktails. Like when the time is right, too. Like when we're in Europe, why not? So if you guys want to see a bunch of those recipes that we've been trying out, just to make on your own or have some fun with your girlfriends, your friends, then definitely check out um, the recipe section in her blog as well. Yay! So, yeah, that's it guys. It's, this has been a 20 minute Q&A. I hope that we answered all of your questions and if we didn't then comment down some more below and I'll get Paige to visit the YouTube page and answer your questions in about a week or something. <laughs> so, totally. Yeah, yeah, why not? I'm in. Thanks guys. I'll see you in the next one. Uh -huh.